Welcome back to today's Cybersecurity and Rapid Response, sponsored by RSA Security on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM. I'm your host, Jason Fornicola, and my guest today is Matt McCormick, Chief Technology Officer of RSA's Global Public Sector. Matt, what does risk management mean in the context of our most critical national security data? So for a long time, our industry, and it still is in some respects, people you know, refer to as security. Well, in today's world, there is no security. There is risk management. And so my job is more from being a security guy to essentially, for lack of a better analogy, an insurance salesman, right? So if you drive a Ferrari, you're going to buy more insurance than if you drive a Civic. Why? Because the car is worth more. You're managing your risk. And it's the same thing in this industry now. Not everybody has the same amount of money or resources or people. And so you're going to manage the risk. You're going to figure out what the risk to your organization is and what you're willing to spend to protect it. And so the concept of risk management is, to one of your previous questions, essentially an acceptance that there is always going to be breaches. How do we manage? How do we manage the risk and make sure that your board of directors or your agency head understands that there's a risk to doing business? When you put anything on a website, it's more risky than if not. But if you want to reach out to 200 million, 300 million taxpayers, you need to have web-based. You don't want to be relying on paper notices and telephone calls. And so as you go toward getting closer to the people or your customers, you increase your risk. People, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, leads me to my next question. We've talked a lot about the, the nuts and bolts and the technology side of this issue, how to respond, how to react. But there's a people part of this too, right? Correct. In your companies, in your agencies. Talk to me about how to properly recruit, train, retrain our employees to make sure that these sorts of things either don't happen again or happen as infrequently as possible. And for me, the people are the biggest issue because you can have all the greatest technology and all the greatest processes. If you don't have the smart, capable people, those are useless. So in the security world or the risk management world, it's people, process, technology. Mm -hmm. Technologies last, people are first. And the reason is you need them. You need them to make decisions. And that is, a, that is actually a challenge the government is having right now, which is retaining security people because the commercial market has exploded for these security people. And many of us in the commercial sector come from the federal government of the military. That is where we learn, that's where we train. So the federal government has these people at a moment in time. There is a struggle to retain them, and that is a problem. We call it in the uh, industry the cyber poverty index. You know, not referencing, you know, some of the other, this is, it is the haves and the have nots. There are certain agencies and certain companies that have lots of people, and there's others that have none. So when you look at, you know, maybe the Fortune 500 has competent security shops, what about the other two and a half million small businesses? Or in the federal government, 20 agencies, the big ones, have big security shops. The other 200 plus have very small. So we have to get better at finding these people, but also less reliance, personal opinion, less reliance on the computer science background. It's important. But as we talked about, there's a lot of aspects to security that are not hardcore technical anymore. Accountants can do great from an auditing point of view. The public affairs aspect, the messaging aspect, there are the training aspect of security. None of those require computer science backgrounds. But yet in the security industry, that's still the people we default to. As we close out here today, Matt, give me a sense for what government cybersecurity looks like in five years. It's going to look very different than it is today, hopefully. If, if it looks like it does today, we're, we're in trouble because it's, the industry is changing. The IT industry is changing. The data industry is changing, moving toward cloud, moving toward accessing data from anywhere. So as we move toward these new technologies that allow people to work remotely and to work collaboratively and work in ways that they haven't before, mm -hmm. the security industry has to change with that. And so you'll see, I think, less reliance on some of the traditional enforcement mechanisms, old compliance standards, things like that, they're going to have to be around more personal responsibility. We're going to allow you to access this data, but if you misuse it, you're in trouble. And that means we as the, the security professionals have to change how we're doing business so that we can get better at detecting anomalies in the cloud on your mobile devices and move away from traditional desktops. And so hopefully we're able to get there 
as the industry, because the IT industry is not going to stop or slow down. So we in the security industry have to speed up to stay with them. I'd like to thank my guest today, Matt McCormick, Chief Technology Officer of RSA's Global Public Sector, on today's cybersecurity and rapid response. For more on our discussion, go to federalnewsradio.com and search RSA. I'm Jason Fornicola.